62 in a special edition of the Midnight Hour. Good evening and welcome to the Midnight Hour, which will have more than a hint of a by-election special, as the programme tonight comes from here in London and Hemsworth in Yorkshire, where we're expecting the result of the by-election in the next few minutes. Ten candidates have been slugging it out for the Yorkshire seat left vacant after the death of Derek Enright, who held the seat for Labour at the last election with a thumping majority of 22,000. I'm joined in the studio by a panel of senior politicians to mull over the result, what it says about the wider political picture and no doubt why the result is a victory for each of their respective parties. Well, with me are John Prescott, Labour's deputy leader, the Health Secretary Stephen Dorrell and Alan Beath, the Liberal Democrats' deputy leader. Uh, John Prescott, uh, has Harriet Harman helped you much in this campaign? I think she's one of the only shadow cabinet members who didn't go up there. No, untrue. About eight of the shadow cabinet members went up. It's about roughly 50%. Others went to South East Staffs. There's another by-election about to come shortly and Harriet went there, so we shared between the two. Um, and what are you expecting? We're going to win. <laughs> Handsomely? Well, uh, we're going to do a win. Our canvases show that uh, I think we'll do better than the last by-election. Might even get a greater proportion of the votes. I think the turnout's likely to be very much like we have in by-elections, or indeed, as I've seen in a number of the Labour seat ones, something like 40%, but we'll do well. Yes. Um, Stephen Dorrell, uh, presumably you're hoping for a huge boost in your poll. You've had the, everyone's saying you've had the best 10 days you've had uh, since John Major won the election in 92. I think we've had, uh, as everyone knows, three difficult years, and the idea that uh, a fortnight's good performance at Westminster, and I think a perceptible change of atmosphere at Westminster is going to be felt immediately in the ballot boxes, I think is frankly naive. I'd be very surprised to see that yet feeding through to any significant extent in the ballot box. I think clearly this is going to but be a by-election, Labour wins, but I think you were quite right. Uh, to say there will be a lot of Labour voters who will have been rather put off by the spectacle of Harriet Harman over the last couple of weeks. But, but these are voters who have uh, immediately been listening to the news. It's been all over the newspapers for the past 10 days. Won't that have had an effect? Well, we shall see, but I'd be rather surprised if it has, because, uh, as I said, uh, the effect of uh, the Tory party winning the argument at Westminster uh, can, I, can be expected, I think, to take some time to feed it through to public perception. Alan Beath, uh, we haven't heard much about a bandwagon. Do they not tend to roll in Yorkshire? Well, we've won most of the by-elections that have taken place in this Parliament, including, of course, the Little Prince Adelworth by-election. I don't think this is one of the ones we're going to win, and we never really claimed so from day one. Second? I think there's going to be quite a scramble for second place amongst a series of parties, one of which has curiously become New Labour, namely Arthur Scargill's party, <laughs> which is confusing the voters even more. The, uh, the success that we have had in by-elections really on a tremendous scale in, in this parliament. It would be nice to have this one as well, but I would be deceiving your viewers if I th said I thought we were going to. Well, our correspondent Anne Perkins is at Hemsworth waiting for the result. Anne, have we any idea how much longer it will be before we get the news? Not absolutely imminent. Uh, maybe five, maybe more likely ten minutes. Uh, I can tell you a few facts, though, so far. It is a low turnout, lower even than the last by-election in 1991, about 39.5%. That's attributed to two factors. They're working on an old register. The new one was just about to come in. And uh, there's still snow on the ground up here. It may surprise you soft southerners. Uh, a couple of other bits of gossip. Labour, I can tell you, are even more um, cheerful than Mr Prescott would uh, have you believe. They're talking in terms of maybe even getting the biggest share of the vote ever. Uh, so obviously, the, the main point of this election was not really how well Labour did, but how well or how badly Arthur Scargill's party did. The word there is that they might save their deposit, not quite clear yet. And uh, how you interpret that, of course, is probably going to depend on which side you're on. 
So has it, has it just been a straight scrap between uh, new Labour and old Labour or new Labour and even newer Labour, whichever way you want to describe Arthur Scargill's new party? Uh, yes, I think that's probably a pretty fair summing up of what's been going on here. Uh, Labour's thrown absolutely everything at it, as, uh, as Mr Prescott hinted earlier. I mean, the Labour leader's been up here, Mr Prescott himself's been up here four times. Um, for, considering they were defending a 22,000 majority, uh, they, they, they treated it uh, like a marginal. And the real purpose of that was to commit a kind of political infanticide to make sure that Arthur Scargill's new Socialist Labour Party never really got off the ground. Uh, Anne Perkins, thank you very much for the moment. John Prescott immediately wanted to take issue with that. Yes, I mean, um, I, since I've been charged with by-elections, we've had exactly this same approach, Littleborough and Saddleworth, where we sent a lot of MPs in. We think MPs Certainly can make is. a very important part, can play an important part, and contact. And we intend to do that every time. And you know, Alan, when he says he's won by-elections, I think since 1992 there have been 13, they've won four, we've won eight of them. But, so but, it's hardly well, won the majority did, of the by-elections. It was actually quite right. a lot of Labour seats. <laughs> That's right. It's when you it comes to, to the winning by-elections, by when it comes to winning by-elections <laughs> off the Conservatives that we succeed, and we run by-elections. Well, we'll after see how well you do tonight, <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Dorrell. I know, I know you. You held the seat at the moment, right, gentlemen? Sorry, uh, let me just stop you for a moment, Stephen Dorrell. Um, I know you won't tell me what went on in your political cabinet a couple of weeks ago, but we are told by usually reliable sources that uh, what was decided that you wouldn't attack Labour as a pale imitation of the Conservatives. Uh, you wouldn't say that there has to be clear blue water. What you'd say is that the Labour Party hasn't changed at all and it's still the same old Labour Party that you've always known. And yet here you have Arthur Scargill saying you'd be lunatic to stay in the Labour Party, it's changed so much. Isn't that rather eloquent testimony to new Labour? I don't think we uh, serve the Tory party political interest and therefore you would expect me to say, in my view, the national interest. Uh, by speculating about whether Labour's moved or not. What I think is important looking forward is to, uh, to explain to the electorate the difference between the Labour Party and this government and the reason why, in my view, uh, it's essential for us to have an enterprise economy here, a government that's committed to building a successful economy, rather than the kind of, of bland and, I think, essentially uh, uh, dangerous ideas associated with the stakeholder concept which Tony Blair's adopted. And he set that out just before this by-election campaign got underway. So presumably you'll have got your message across, will you? Well, as I said to you, I think it's absurd to, I, to think uh, that a couple of good Prime Minister's questions and the whole atmosphere in the country changes. Of course that's not true. But what is true is that uh, the, ch the uh, change of, a po of political atmosphere in the country starts at Westminster, and I don't think you'd find any of your professional colleagues as journalists, whatever their political persuasion, who don't accept the proposition that the political atmosphere is, uh, Westminster Westminster has changed since the beginning of this year. But Stephen, when we were on a program before, I think it was the Dudley by-election, you said uh, we've done quite well here, it'll take us a little time to get the message across. Now that's some time ago since the Dudley by-election, since you've lost that. No. Now you're telling us it's a couple of weeks uh, question time or something with the Prime Minister, we'll, we'll have to wait until that gets over to the electorate. You're still losing, and I assume you're not predicting you're going to do very well in this by-election. I think I, d I don't remember the last time the Tory party won in Hemsworth, but it was before records began. I d this is clearly going to be a, made, uh, a big majority for the Labour candidate. It would be nothing short of a total disaster if, this, if you didn't win this by-election by a wide Can margin. But, but I agree. I agree staff, I, I, Can you give us a prediction uh, well, for South no, East staff? Well, I, we, I look forward to the programme on South East <laughs> staffs, John. We'll no doubt be able to talk about that then. Alan Beath, I'm sure you're going to want to say this is the two parties just slugging it out, aren't you? Well, I'm sitting back watching with some amusement, but what, what will be the interesting question after it's all over is what the people who were tempted by Arthur Scargill's attempt to reassert socialism will do, whether they'll conclude from whatever result we get tonight that there is some future in trying to run a socialist party other than the Labour Party, or whether they'll take a look at the result and say it doesn't work that way, we've got to continue to pile into the Labour Party and try to manipulate it from within, and that has but, been the, what's tend Arthur, to happen over the years. Doesn't Arthur Scargill's party. party pose real threats to you? Because it makes Tony Blair probably look even more moderate to ordinary voters, eliminating perhaps it, the reason for the Liberal it, Democrats. It, it poses, Arthur Scargill's party poses no threat to us whatsoever, uh, and has, has no real effect on, on Liberal Democrat voters and potential voters. The effect it has, if it's any, is on people who, if they were to vote Labour, vote Labour because they are socialists and want the Labour Party to be a genuinely socialist party. But They're Alan not the sort of people who would finish up voting. Alan, we've had 150,000 new members join in about 18 well, months. That's resigning a, since but the Harriet Harman case. Well, I mean, 150,000 new members. 
Some have come from the Tory party, some have come from the Liberal party. It's the fastest growing political party. So when you suggest they're joined to actually undermine within, they're joining the party that they think is the only alternative to the Tory party. That's the I answer to that. I think John, John would Prescott, be denying sorry, actually, history let me just ask, Can I just ask you, John? Uh, Prescott, um, have you had many resignations since the Harriet Hammer affair? I, I, many, I don't uh, membership no, cards? I, I've read the uh, press reports from that. I honestly don't know, quite frankly, what the case is. There's been protest. There's no doubt about it. I've received letters about it. Some for, some against, but I don't know exactly what the number is about From protest. Labour Party but it certainly members, isn't anything you? like 150,000 no. members who joined it, and our rate of joining the Labour Party is still as fast as it was 15 months ago. But from Labour Party members, how is the uh, correspondence running in terms of proportion in favour of Harriet Harman, those against, would you I say? Know. If you think I've got time to count through correspondence, all I know <laughs> is that I have some in my... morning's newspapers, John, from, see clearly from within her own constituency that the great weight of opinion among your own members members in, in Harriet's own constituency mm. is hostile to her. And it's not surprising because what they're saying is that here is an example of a senior Labour politician saying to us we should act one way while in her own private life acting in a quite different way. Well, and it's not surprising. Whether I had received it, it, this and what the numbers were, I couldn't give an answer to it. So no, I don't know exactly. No. I suspect nobody can tell us exactly what that no, situation I, I, is. But it has been controversial. Now that's no great statement to make. Right. The decision was controversial. What I'm point, pointing out to you is that there's clear evidence in this morning's papers and I'm sure you read the papers. But do you, I don't always believe them, do you? <laughs> Let me just interrupt this for a moment uh, to say that we'll be get, hopefully getting the result uh, in the next five minutes or so. I think they're just counting some sport ballots, which is always the thing that delays by-election counts for those who've uh, sat at them waiting anxiously to find the yeah. final result. And as you can see, the count is going on at the moment and I think we can see there uh, one of the Conservatives uh, there and obviously I think that's the Mayor there with his fine chain of office on. So we'll bring you that result uh, just as soon as it's ready. As I say, I think they're just dealing with a few spoilt ballot papers and there's always a big row between the political parties, whether it's one of theirs or whether it belongs to somebody else. There's Lord Such in the background. There's a Liberal Democrat candidate who's taller than most of the others. Uh, there's a, I'm told there's a Liberal Democrat <laughs> he's, there. He's actually counted to see whether he saves the deposit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John Prescott, coming back to you, um, uh, Anne Perkins was saying earlier that the, what, the reason you were up in uh, Hemsworth so much was that you wanted to con commit an act of political infanticide well, to stop the Scargill party get well, four times to be up there for well, a by-election that's a safe well, I'm sorry, I've taken over in two by-elections now, which one of my responsibilities and key seat strategies that we have in our responsibilities. My first one was Little Bit and Saddleworth, and I it was certainly more than four times in Little Bit and Saddleworth. Yeah, we brought in it. something like 120 MPs went to Little Bit and Saddleworth, in this case over 60 and something like half the Shadow Cabinet. We intend to get our message across. This isn't peculiar to this election, it's an and already in South East staffs, yeah, yeah. we've had something yeah. like four to five Shadow Cabinet members, a number of backbenchers have gone in there. It is our approach to get a our case across on the doorstep. If it's that, if it's your uh, approach to get the case across, and if you're th you think that the explanation of the Labour's case is so important, why was it that the candidate in this by-election cancelled the one radio debate between the candidates and the major parties that would have allowed exactly that? process to well, take that's place. quite simple because he's not prepared to debate with the fascist National Front Party. That's a line they've taken there. It, we do not want to give publicity to a fascist party, a National Front Party. It's mm -hmm. the line the Labour Party's taken. You can disagree <coughs> with it, no, but it wasn't the fear of debate. We did not want right. to give publicity to them. If you did, fine, the Labour Party doesn't. I, I, I disagree with it because I think that it's important for us to win arguments. I okay, think it's important okay, for okay, the... But the, I've the, given the, you the reason, Stephen. I mean, well, you can say it's right or wrong, but it wasn't any fearful of debate. We will not give publicity to an avowedly racist, fascist party like the National Front. Mm. That's our position. Stephen Dorrell, you raised an interesting question there, which I just have to follow up on. The logic of your argument suggests that you believe John Major should debate with Tony Blair in the next general election. Because I'm well, sure Tony Blair will challenge, because the opposition leader always does. Yeah, we'll see about that. What I also, I, I, uh, what I think <laughs> in well, most... But, 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 in, would, you, in, would you agree <laughs> the logic of your argument no, I wouldn't. is that he should? No, I wouldn't. Yeah. Because the, it, with, within each individual constituency, I think that uh, uh, the tradition is, and it certainly is something I've always done, I did it actually, the first parliamentary yeah. election I ever fought was with John Prescott. Uh, we had a radio debate. And in my own constituency, I have always had debates with all the other candidates. And it just strikes me as odd that on this occasion, the Labour candidate refused to have one. So why shouldn't John Major debate yeah. with Tony Blair and Paddy Ashdown at the next well, election? Well, we, we shall see whether Tony Blair wants a debate. I'm not uh, saying whether there should be or shouldn't be. <laughs> uh, what do you think on balance would be better? 
I'm not going to comment on that because I, that's a, a, an issue that no doubt Mr. Blair will decide in his own time and the Prime Minister will decide well, in his own time. Well, I'll accept for Mr. And Blair. Will I, you I don't accept for Mr. Major? I don't now, will you accept for Mr. Major, then? I have a suspicion, with, <laughs> I have a suspicion with John, with RSVP that Tony, at the bottom. Tony Blair might not want you signing him into things, and I'm absolutely certain John Major is perfectly capable of making his decisions about these without me signing them into him for it. Right. Uh, so, Alan well, Don't keep getting on about other candidates. No, then. I'll, <laughs> what I will undertake, what I will undertake is that in my parliamentary election at the next general election there will be a, can a debate oh, yeah. if other candidates wish to take part in which I will take part as I did with you and I think it's right. odd your candidate didn't in this yeah, by-election. You can't criticise the candidate and then say when you're asked the question I'm, why doesn't your Prime Minister publicly right. debate? Look, Al 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 Alan B, why is it that you seem to have such trouble uh, challenging where Labour are the main party? You're all very, you, you do very well in the South or you do very well in seats where the Conservatives are the party to be beaten. You don't seem to come anywhere near Labour. We are the main challengers to Labour in local government in much of the North of England. We are the opposition party on many of the councils of the North of England. We win by-elections and local elections from Labour in local government. But when you're actually faced with a Labour seat which has traditionally had one of the largest majorities of any Labour seat in the country, and indeed where it was regarded as uh, something of a disappointment in the last couple of elections they didn't actually make that record then you really are up against a pretty severe obstacle indeed. But presumably you'd be pretty disappointed that you, you as you say you've challenged Labour in all these councils not to be the main challengers tonight in this by-election. Well that, that remains to be seen who turns out to be the main challenger at the end of the day but in so much of the North we are and in other by-elections uh, and local elections in Yorkshire, we are the only challenges to Labour. The greatest increase where we fought Liberals who were second and Labour was third, we did the best result performance against the Liberals. John Pesco, let me, interrupt, let me just interrupt you for a moment, because I think we can, we can see over there a big huddle, and Arthur Scargill's fledgling party at the centre of uh, that huddle, and he's busy looking, I think... I. I now, I have no information whatsoever, and this is wild speculation, but I just wonder whether what's at stake here is a lost deposit or a saved deposit, because I'm sure this is what will be going on, because I'm sure if Arthur Scargill was able to claim that he'd saved his deposit... I think, John Prescott, you were uh, speculating that there was no, very little chance that Arthur Scargill uh, would save his deposit. I've got a feeling from our canvas returns that probably the Liberals and the um, Scargill's party are fighting to keep their deposit. I think um, that seemed to be the case, and if I look at Arthur's face now, it does seem to be a consideration, doesn't it? Do you, do you feel it's a loss to have lost Arthur Scargill, or a positive advantage? Well, Arthur's made his decision to go. I mean, we just fight the Labour's case, and if he can't agree with that policy, as he clearly doesn't, then let him fight him. We'll see what his result is in a mining area, how good he's been at keeping the vote. But you were traditionally seen as a person on the left of the Labour Party, and Arthur Scargill, another member of the left of the party. Didn't it cause you some sadness to see a, this a distinguished figure, figure of the Labour movement uh, leaving for another party? Well, I spent a lot of time getting people to join the Labour Party. It's obviously my main mission, I think, in the last 12, 18 months, and we've been quite success successful at it. Arthur's gone. OK, move on. Uh Alan Beath, if John Prescott, and we are in the land of conjecture because we haven't got uh, a result yet and we were hoping we'd get it. We see someone coming to the platform now. It's, well, we're told that the result will be in five minutes, so hopefully we'll get it before we come off air. But uh, it would be rather embarrassing if you're scrapping it out with Arthur Scargill's fledgling party, which hasn't even been launched yet, to see right. who's going to save their deposit. If that's the case, the embarrassment would be for the Conservatives if they were in the fourth place, if, as you say, the two of us are scrabbling over the second place. But uh, you're talking about an election in which six out of ten people didn't bother to vote. This is an election in what is supposed to be a strong Labour area. Where are the six out of ten people you'd expect to come along and actually vote in support of the Labour Party? Where of the 40% or less poll that took place, Labour continues to have a, a large majority and the challengers uh, in, include a section of the Labour Party which has gone elsewhere and ourselves. Do you think it's partly disenchantment? with the electoral process, with the Yabu politics, that uh, so many people have stayed away? Or is this just what we well, It's a cold day in Yorkshire, people have stayed indoors? One of the features of the electoral system is that people in constituencies like Hemsworth feel that they can't influence the outcome, that really it's going to be a Labour victory anyway, so why bother? We spend a lot of election campaigns saying to people, yes, it is worth it, do go and vote. If, you'd, if all the six out of ten came and vote, they could most certainly elect somebody different because they represent a majority. But people do feel, given our electoral system, that the, when votes pile up in, in safe seats, then other people's views simply get pushed out, and it's one of the I big disadvantages. That, that, uh, that uh, puts far too much weight on the argument about the electoral system. What I think is true 
is that right across the, the political spectrum at this moment, none of the parties are hold, have been over the last uh, three years, frankly, explaining a case that has motivated people. Certainly people have been disgruntled with the government. That's a matter of record. Uh, I don't uh, sense, when I talk not just to Tory voters, but when I talk to floating voters, when I talk to Labour's own supporters, uh, I don't sense a clear uh, excitement at the prospect of either the Liberals well, that, or, the, or, or the case, a Labour we alternative. Wouldn't have been winning but do you no, sense excitement? Uh, uh, no, Stephen Doyle, do you sense excitement no, with said, the Conservative I've, Party I've, either? I said uh, right across the political spectrum, I don't think any of the political parties have, until the beginning, certainly until the end of last year, focused people's minds to the extent that they feel a sense of excitement here of a group of people who actually know what they're going to do. And that's what I think has been changing but, in the right, last Steve, few but, weeks. But do you, Stephen, do you, I think, you, Stephen, you make your point perfectly fairly and you criticize, implicitly criticise your own party in the process. But if that were so, we wouldn't have been able to win by no, it doesn't follow as all. we did in Little and Sadworth, no. as we did in Newbury, as we did in Christchurch, if you believe, as if we did in Eastleigh, because Alan, there, there was the excitement if you, that there is something different no, available to if, people. If you seriously believe that people went out in those by-elections to vote positively for the kind of things you stand for, for a federal Europe, for higher taxes, then you haven't looked at right. any of the evidence Put about what way, people they actually want. Well, indeed. Safeguarding Britain's place in Europe, but, getting a better education uh, system. No, but, uh, yeah, but you don't disagree with the proposition that you're, yours is a party in favour of a federal Europe, in favour of higher taxes. We That's are. not what they're voting for. What people have you, voted for in this parliament in by-elections is a, a protest vote against a rough ride through the end of the recession. What none of the parties have yet succeeded in doing is setting out a clear set of messages which people say that's a, a message I strongly agree with and want to see carried out. That's the challenge that faces Stephen all of Dorf, us and it's one that, the, that I think we've seen over the last few weeks the Tory party starting to address. Let me interrupt you there because I think we are getting near to that moment when the uh, by-election result is about to be declared. I think the returning officer is gathering people, people trying to sit down. Let's cross over to Anne Perkins. Anne. Thanks, John. Yeah, it's just about to happen, I think. Small argument with the uh, still photographers who stood up in front of us. And here comes the deputy acting returning officer. No, he's still sorting things out. As I say, Labour is very, very confident indeed. And the Conservatives are actually looking fairly chirpy because they think they are going to be a comfortable second, although a very long way behind Labour. And presumably, and the reason for the delay is they've just got to check all those last bits, every, all the agents to agree the numbers. I can see a man there scratching his back, is it? Yeah, yes, well, all the... The, the other delay might be the fact that there are ten candidates. As you can see, some of them from the more bizarre wing of politics. <laughs> uh, there's always a bit of a carnival atmosphere, isn't there, at these by-election counts? Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's been good fun tonight, helped by the fact that they've um, done it so incredibly quickly and efficiently. And I must say that people up here couldn't have been more helpful uh, or friendlier. Um, this uh, comprehensive school where we are is actually hosting its uh, second by-election count in, in, in five years and uh, they're beginning to um, get rather used to doing it, I think. So, right. have we any idea what this latest hold-up is? No, Come I'm on. sorry, I can't uh, give you any indication at all. Uh, it looked as if they were absolutely all set. I can see the High Sheriff. There, oh. the, here comes the High Sheriff who is also the acting returning officer and he is going to give the results. This is uh, Neil Pullen Edwards, High Sheriff of West Yorkshire. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, a few more technical The election questions. of a member to serve in Parliament for the Hemsworth constituency. Declaration of result of poll. I, the undersigned, being the returning officer at the election of a member to serve in Parliament for the Hemsworth constituency, held on the first day of February 1996, do hereby give notice that the number of votes recorded for each candidate at the said election is as follows. Alexandra Peggy, Green Party, 157. Hooray! Cooper Michael Parkin, National Democrat. Yes! 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 
Thank you, gentlemen. One, one, one. Davis Peter, UK Independent Party, 455. Hazel Norman Joseph, Conservative Party, 1942. Leighton Diane Jennifer, National Law Party, 28. Nixon. Brenda Denise, Socialist Labour Party, 1,193. And that is a comfortably held deposit. The cut-off was uh, 1,100. Your enthusiasm is infectious, gentlemen. But please allow me to continue. Ridgeway, John Anthony David, 1,516. It's the Liberal Democrat candidate. He's also held his deposit Such very comfortably. Lord David, official monster raving loony party, 652. Thomas, Mark Clifford, Mark Thomas, Friday night, Channel 4 party, 122. And here comes the Labour candidate. Trickett, John Headley, the Labour party, 1,000, 15,800. <laughs> 15,817. And that must I, be just around I the 70% mark. I do hereby declare mark. that the said John Headley Trickett is duly elected as Member of Parliament for the said constituency. Well, 15,817 votes there for John Trickett. Uh, John Prescott, your reaction to the result? Well, a very good result. I think uh, it's even more in percentages than we got in the general election and indeed the last by-election. So it's a good victory for Labour. Very um, good. Expected to be so high? Uh, we thought we were going to do well. Our canvases showed that and we found it's an excellent result. It's the highest proportion of vote we've had either in the by-election or the general election. So we certainly welcome it. It seems that the Liberal Democrats have really been knocked down from that result. Stephen Dorrell, uh, we did some calculations on what the vote would have been on the 91 basis when, you know, it was a fair comparison and you should have got 2,324 votes by our comparison. A bit down on that? A, a longer list of candidates. John Prescott says that he's well up on the general election. He's actually up by 0.6 of 1%, so it's hardly a but huge increase on the general election. The by-election was 66. Not bad. But, but Not it's bad. a good result. It's a good result <laughs> for you. Labour, but the, the, it, nonetheless, it's hardly... It's in, the truth is, it's statistically unchanged from the general election in terms of your share of the vote. 70.8 to 71.4. Yeah, it is not a significant this shift. A, this is a 40% turnout. It was 76% turnout in the general you, well, election. You talk, it was you that raised the question of percentages right, now, of the poll, John, not yeah. me. Right. Uh, Alan, Alan Beath, um, you beat, I think, uh, Arthur Scargill's party by about 300 votes. It was hardly a very impressive Liberal Democrat performance, was it? Well, as uh, John Prescott himself pointed out, there's only a 40% poll. Uh, David Ridgway okay. fought for a good campaign, right. we had a reasonable result. Right, let's, let's cross now to Anne Perkins, who's got Arthur Scargill with her. Thank you, Arthur Scargill. You couldn't do it here. Where can you do it? We can do it everywhere. The fact is that we've doubled the number of votes that were produced at the last by-election in Hemsworth in 1991, and we've also demonstrated Co that what Keir Hardy did a century ago could be here. This is your heartland. You barely saved your deposit. What is your future? Well, bearing in mind that you and people like we said we'd lose our deposit, it can only be described as a successful venture when we haven't even formed the party until the 1st of May. The fact that Brenda Nixon was able to get a vote as high as this, double what the independent Labour candidate got in 1991, is in my view a tribute to an outstanding candidate in the Great Party. We have to leave it. Thank you very much. Back to the studio.
And that's all from the midnight hour. And here is the result from the Hemsworth by-election that we've just given you. A clear victory for the Labour Party from the midnight hour. Good night. Bernard Ingham will be in the seat on Monday. From all of us, have a good evening. A very good evening to you and welcome to the Learning Zone 